What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of you all who will, also go over to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speaks TV. Make sure you subscribe over there and uh, click that notification bell so you get notifications when I drop a new video. Now, let's get into this topic. All right, y'all. Thanks for clicking on the video. Hope everyone is doing well. Now, you all remember the story I did a couple of months ago about a pastor out in Alabama, out in Mobile, Alabama, Pastor Gregory Rene Adams, who was arrested at the end of July and charged with three counts of rape, first degree, two counts of rape, second degree, three counts of sodomy, first degree, and two counts of sexual abuse. Now, today was the preliminary hearing and four victims have come forward. The alleged crimes span back decades. Now, the pastor has one church, two locations, and the Mobile Police Department alleges that Pastor Adams met his victims through churches within Centronelle and Waynesboro, Mississippi. Now, during the hearing, an investigator with the Mobile Police Department testified that Pastor Adams started raping one of his victims from the time that she was 12 years old, and it continued for many years. The sexual abuse and assault would allegedly take place at his home as well as the victim's home. Another one of the possible victims, who also was 12 at the time, said that she was staying the night at the pastor's house before a missionary trip to Arkansas when the first sexual assault occurred. A third victim alleges she was a parishioner at Pastor Adams Church and met him during her adult years. Now, you all remember I told you he was going after the young girls as well as some of the women in his church. This lady said that Pastor Adams is the father of her child. What? And that she had unwanted sexual intercourse with him? I guess she's saying that he raped her. Man, this is getting crazy. A fourth possible victim alleges she was also friends with Pastor Adam's children and she was raped at his home. The investigator testified that Pastor Adams used his power as a pastor to make his victims fear him. Now, I know some of you are probably saying, Dawson, well, I understand the 12 years old coming out and saying it, but these grown women, how are they fearing the pastor? Let me tell you how they fear the pastor. In these churches, when they have this cult dynamics, when they have these witches and warlocks in the church who try to get over the pulpit and they manipulate people and tell people, if you come against the pastor, if you come against the first lady, if you say something bad about the evangelist or the prophet, you go into hell, I speak a curse over you. It's going to follow you for all the days of your life. And if you lead this church, you going straight to hell. That's the kind of fear they put in people. And because people love God so much and they believe that these people in the pulpit, not all of them, some of them, please don't play with me. Some of them are called by God. They listen to these people even when they're being abused. Can I work right here? I'm going to do it anyway. I'm just I'm just trying to, you know, set the tone right here. That's what happens. Many times in these churches, we have these people because they have a, a somewhat of a big following and a lot of people boost their head up. Oh, say it, pastor. Say it, first lady. Speak it, evangelist. You better say it, prophetess. The prophetess got fire. Yeah, right. The prophetess got something else, too, but I'm going to say that for another show. Y'all know how I go there. But look here. That's how these people get so they're so, you know, caught up. In leadership, and when the leadership is doing wrong, or there's spiritual abuse, there's manipulation, come on, emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, financial abuse, no one is held accountable. And people are scared to come forward, not so much, yes, the leadership they'll get on, on you, but also the people in the congregation. Oh, that's a spirit on you. You coming against the pastor. The pastor didn't touch you. You got the Jezebel spirit on you. I saw it when you was sitting in the pew. You didn't see nothing but a woman sitting there. You didn't look at the pastor who was lusting after these young girls and these women. But some of you people in the congregation will defend these people even when you have proof. Even when the pastor, this pastor here, got on national television and the news anchor, you all remember that clip, when she said, do you have anything you want to say to the victims? And he said, I'm sorry. Would you like to say sorry to the victim? Is that a yes? He eventually apologized. You nodded your head yes that you were sorry to the victims. Would you like to say sorry to them physically? I'm sorry. Investigators say sorry will never be enough for the trauma he's caused the victims. Y'all still will stand by these people who raped people in the church. And we're going to hell. 
No, I'm going to hell for reporting this. Oh, Dawson, you an accuser of the brethren. You going to hell. I'm going to hell and the pastor right here doing all this foul stuff. Where he going to Vegas? Let me go on. According to the testimonies in court, Pastor Adams told one of his victims if she didn't have sex with him, God would strike her down with lightning. That's what the pastor said. Oh, good old pastor, 63 years old. Pastor Adams allegedly told his victims he chooses who goes to heaven or hell. <laughs> oh, man. Testimonies allege that Pastor Adams, listen to this, y'all. He used holy oil, anointing oil. Lord Jesus. Oh, God, 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 I can't make this stuff up. The pastor used the anointing oil, the holy oil, the olive oil, the blessing oil as lubricant to sexually assault some of his victims. Take a breath. Hmm. 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 But uh, we going to hell for reporting this. I'm going to hell for talking about this. But the pastor will get there before us because he's going on a slippery slope to hell. Not only are you a pastor, a pastor that has one church, two locations, you're a married pastor, have a family of your own. You're a pastor who's charged with sexual abuse, multiple counts of sodomy and rape. And you're taking the blessing oil that you touch people's head with or during Bible study. During revival, during Sunday morning and certain Sunday night service, you're taking that blessing oil and you're using that as lubrication on these victims. Disgusting. Now, the investigator said it took years for the victims to come forward because they feared no one would believe them. No one in the church would believe them. And I agree. And some family members probably wouldn't believe him either. That's why we have all these people coming out saying what's happening to him now. Because, your oh, the pastor didn't do that. Your uncle didn't do that. Your cousin didn't do that. Oh, we got to forgive. Oh, but get out of here. Pastor Adams is out of jail on bond. Take a breath. Oh, my God, Jesus. Jesus. He's out of jail on bond. The judge bound all of his charges over to a grand jury. Anyone with additional information about this case, including potential victims, uh, call the Mobile Police Department and let them know what's going on, okay? Now, let me say this. I know there are a lot of you who say, well, why do these people uh, send their children over to these individuals' homes? Or why do they let the pastor or people in the church? No, oh, come on now. They're like you all are in the church and you all let these people just lay hands on you, these traveling evangelists, these people who come from all over the world. You don't know what they did the night before. But, oh, the prophetess is coming in town and she can call you out and get you to give her 1000 to $10,000. That's the same way some of these people are trusting with their kids because they feel that these individuals are close to God not a lot of them a lot of people aren't watching Dawson speak TV they're not watching the other vloggers they some of the pastors and people have told them that YouTube is of the devil but then your child get raped then you want us to do a story on it you hit us up please this happened to me in church this happening to me I need to tell my story no you better flip that camera around and hit play and tell your own story on YouTube if you can comment criticize and critique you can create content on your own platform take a breath Dawson Shondo I feel like saying it again if you can comment criticize and critique you can create content on your own platform you don't need me you need to open your mouth and speak Boy, I be going off on this show, don't I? <laughs> Let me calm my own self down. But I'm serious. Many people believe that there, these people in the church wouldn't touch them, wouldn't harm them until they go through this stuff. And then that's the outcry. And all I'm here trying to do, not trying to be your best friend, not trying to get you to like me, is to try to get you to wake up. Wake up. It's just like my cousin told me a couple of weeks, some of these people in church, they're like a bunch of zombies. And I'm just trying to get you to snap out of it. Come on, man. I remember I had a client one time. His mama told me, she said, I, you know, his dad ain't doing what he's supposed to do. And he's a, he's a young man growing up here in Miami. And she said, I went to this church and I just went into church and it was a, they was having a deacons meet. And she said, I told the deacons, I just need somebody, just anybody to be a role model to my child. I don't need y'all to give me money. Don't give me food. Just somebody to be a role model to my child. And I understood that mother's pain. But I'm the Dawson and I had to tell her, don't you ever do that again. Because there's some people who will see that as a weakness in you and they will take advantage of your child. And you, don't you ever do that. Everyone in the church, 
We like to think everybody is so real and they're this and that. Not all churches, some. Please get that. There are a lot of people who are in these churches and it's a breeding ground for molestation. It's a breeding ground for extramarital affairs. It's a breeding ground for manipulation. And if you all don't want to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it. Just sit back and listen. Now go off in the comments, y'all. I keep going all night. It's your guy Dawson. Take care of yourself and each other. Peace.